Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have already solved almost all the math problems from this book. If there is a math problem that gives you trouble, that, 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 that gives you difficulty, you can find the solution to the problem. You will find the solution to the problem from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book contains almost all the same problems and in most cases on the, exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are done with solving all the problems from here. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Original solutions tend to be a little lengthier, they tend to be a little bit more in depth. Right now, we are in the process of solving quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE, because, we, because the other two books do not contain, simply do not contain enough quantitative comparison questions. So get some extra practice. From day number 401, we started solving quantitative comparison questions. And right now, we are on page number 208 of this book. Let's turn to it. Very first problem on the page, number 208, page number 208, problem number 12. Always remember, even if I forget to remind you, always rem remind yourself, always remember to pause the video as soon as I set up the problem and then solve the problem yourself. And then after you have solved the problem yourself, then compare your work against the work that we'll do together in a few seconds. Do you understand? You will always learn more that way instead of simply watching the solution. Because once you know the solution, then it's done. There is no, there is no fun left in it. Here's the problem. Number 12. When it was given in the real exam, when it was given in the real exam, only half the people got it right. 49% of the people got it right. 51% of the people, slight, slight majority, uh, actually uh, did, uh, did get it wrong. Here's the problem. We are told that we have a rectangle, rectangle R, we are told, has area of 30. So we have a rectangle with the area of 30. And what we are being asked to compare is the perimeter of the rectangle, perimeter of the rectangle R versus 25. Column B, very simple. Very straightforward question, column A, column B. We simply have to compare the perimeter of a rectangle, a rectangle whose area we are told is 30. Question is, how does, this, how does its perimeter compare with 25? Pause the video and do it yourself. I'll give you two seconds to pause and unpause the video. Alright. Well, what's going to happen is that the reason why half the people missed this thing is because those half of the people do not realize what these answer choices mean. A, B, C, and D. There are four answer choices here. I'm breaking into sermon as you can tell. There are four answer choices in the quantitative comparison question. What does it mean when, you pick, when we pick answer choice A? What is it that we are claiming when we pick answer choice A? When we pick answer choice A, what we are claiming is that the quantity in column A is always bigger. When we pick answer choice B, the claim that we're making is that the quantity in column B is always greater. Always is the operative word. Always is the key word. And when you pick C for the answer choice, the claim that you're making is that the two quantities are always, always, always equal. Which is why it's important that we cover all of our bases, which is why it's important for us to contemplate all the different scenarios that we have to, in other words, we have to think outside the box. Don't just think in a very restricted way with the, with the blinds around your eyes in a very parochial way. In a very parochial way. You have to think in a very broad-minded way. So let's first start with the parochial, parochial thought, the, the traditional thought, the very restricted thought, the thought that will come to most people's minds, which is simply, they will make up a triangle, a simple triangle with the area of 30. The simplest one I can think of is 5 by 6. A 5 by 6 triangle, 5 by 6 is, has the area of 30. The perimeter here which is going to be 5 plus 5 is 10, 10, and then 12. So the perimeter is 22 here. This is 25 here. The answer is B. Now what does that answer tell us? That answer choice B does not tell us that the answer is B. So far, the work that we have done so far, 
that does not tell us that the answer is B. What it tells us is that we do not know what the answer is, but the answer cannot be A. Why is it that the answer cannot be A? Because answer choice A would have meant that the quantity in column A is always greater. But the quantity in column, column A cannot possibly be always greater when we have found one instance when it is not. This word that we have done so far also tells us that the answer cannot be C. Because the C would have meant that the two quantities are equal. But we can bloody well see here that the two quantities in this instance are not equal. The two quantity cannot possibly be always equal if we have found one instance when they are not. So the answer is either B or D. Now what we have to do at this point is to think outside the box. Don't think in a very parochial manner as I said before. I'm going to actually look up and see when we learned the word parochial before, before I erase it inadvertently. Day number 55. Vocabulary day 55. If you are interested in improving your vocabulary, and I see no reason why you wouldn't be, just type in GRE vocabulary words, GRE vocabulary words, day 55. Watch the video where you learn the word parochial along with some other words. Now we have to think in in, in, in more broad-minded way, more broad-minded fashion. And what we need to do here is to realize that as far as the exam is concerned, as far as this exam is concerned, there are two kinds, two classes, two categories of numbers that we have to contemplate. One is what we call the nice numbers. Nice numbers are just no whole number, positive number. And then we have nasty numbers. Always go through the list of nasty numbers. Make sure you cover all your bases. The nastiest of all is zero. Well, obviously zero is not going to work here because you, can make, you cannot make one side equal to zero. The next nasty number is one. Then we have negative and then we have fractions. Fractions. Always go in this order. Always go in this order. Don't go all over the place. Go systematically. Ask yourself, is zero possible? If zero is not possible, ask yourself, next, is one possible? Is one possible here? The answer is yes. It is quite possible to have a rectangle which is 1 by 30. 1 by 30. Here's our rectangle. It has the area of 30. It's 1 by 30. If it's 1 by 30, the perimeter of this rectangle is going to be 30 plus 30 which is 60 plus 2, 62. 62 versus 25 and now the answer is A. Before the answer was B, now the answer is A. Because of the fact that the answer switched, the correct answer is D. The correct answer is D. That's all it was. That's all. That's the only trick here. The trick here is to think of these nasty scenarios, which about half the people did not, which is why they got it wrong. They got it wrong not because the problem was difficult. The problem actually is a very simple question. They forget what these answer choices mean. Answer choices always mean that whichever answer that you're picking, that quantity is always, always, always greater. And if you cannot make the determination, then the answer is D. Problem number 13. Problem number 13. The jam another geometry question. And this one percentile increases to 66%. Two thirds of the people had no trouble. Let's take a look at it. Two thirds of the people had no trouble. Here's what we're given here. We're given a, we're given a triangle here. We are told that this is x degrees. We are told that this is 20 degrees, and let's call this y degrees. Is that how it is? Yep. We are also told that x is less than 90. As x is less than 90. x is less than 90, and we are being asked to compare y versus 70. This angle y here, angle y versus 70. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Let's see what we can do. Well, we know that angle X is less than 90. We are told here, angle X is less than 90. Instead of writing it like this, instead of writing it like this, which, which looks a little bit more complicated, let's put it in a simple way. Forget about the symbol for degree. X equals less than 90. This is how we write less than 90. With the minus sign on the top. Minus sign on the top means that this quantity is something less than 90. What it is, it doesn't matter. We are not told that. It's simply it's less than 90. What we have to understand is that this is a straight line. This is a straight line. So if this angle is less than 90, if this angle is less than 90, then this angle here has to be more than 90. Are you with me? 
something more than 90 plus a 20, something more than 90 plus a 20, sum of these two angles is going to be something more than 110. The sum of these two angles is going to be something more than 110. And we know that all of these three angles have to add up to 180. We know that 20, 20 plus something more than 90, something more than 90 plus a y has to add up to 180. Exactly. Has to add up to 180. Now we're making too much fuss because you already know what the answer is. So that's what it is. So y plus something more than 110 equals 180. If you subtract this quantity from both sides, what we find is that y would have to be something less than 70. This would have to be something less than 70 because of the fact that this is something more than 110. If, if this is something more than 110, if the sum of these two is more than 110, then this y cannot be equal to 70. If y, equal, y, if y were equal to 70, the whole sum would have been more than 180. y also cannot be more than 70. y would have to be less than 70 because of the fact that the sum of the other two angles is already more than 110. If the sum of the other two angles is already more than 110 degrees, then the third angle has to be less than 70. The third angle has to be less than 70. Something less than 70 versus 70, the answer is B. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.